Today we're going to take a look at making off a ceiling rose and pendant as if it's in the ceiling as we would do when we're working say in a domestic dwelling. Often at college we're clipping cables to wooden boards and we haven't got the ability to move the conductors around or turn them over. As well as often we only have two cables at our lighting point and in the real world the likelihood is most of our lighting points are going to have three cables. So we'd have the supply coming in, line neutral CPC, the supply going out line neutral and CPC and then the one that goes down to the switch with the switching line, permanent line and CPC and I've identified that's something we don't do at college is it when we're on our apprenticeship we'd need to identify which one goes to the switch and it's one or the other um, I used to put two nicks in my one on site or you can write on it to identify it as the one that goes down to the switch so what we've got now is we've got the ability to move these out up and down and across each other so meaning that we can lay them out as best we can before we dress them into our ceiling rows and pendant I've got a variety of them here so they're all similar, so we'll have a block of two for our switch line, a block of three for our loop, and a block of three for our neutral. And all the ones I've got here on the desk are exactly the same. So we've got the same sort of scenario layout. So if yours doesn't look identical to this one, so in this case, we can see it's curved round. Okay, it's the same principle. And I don't recommend disconnecting the conductors either, whether it be for a baton lamp holder or a ceiling rose and pendant, because it gives you two more connections to make off obviously once you've completed the ceiling rose itself. But I've taken mine away on this one just to give us the maximum amount of chance to see what's going on. But obviously we're gonna leave the two outside ones that would have the flex going down to the pendant. So we're gonna leave those two out the way. And we've talked about in previous videos that these brass blocks here are a block of two a block of three and a block of three, and it wouldn't matter which one goes in which of the holes. However, we always like to leave the outside ones for the flexible cable. So let's have a look first of all at the way our conductors are lined up. I've got the switching line one on the side, which is for the switch, so that's a good starting position. And then I look at the other two, which are my line um, neutral and CPCs in and out, these two. Well, my neutral's on this side and my neutral's on this side, but actually my neutral block is here, so it's on the opposite side. So I would rather have the neutral on this side on both of these cables. It's ever so easy in the real world. These cables go up into the ceiling, so just pull them back a little bit. We can just twist them round and then push them back. So twist them round and push them back and now look at it. Let's have a look at our layout now. We've got the neutrals on the correct side. So this side where our neutral block is, we've got our neutrals, our permanent lines, which will go into our loop and our CPCs. If we look at the one for the switching line, let's just check that. We've got the blue one, which isn't a neutral, which is our switching line and our brown one, which is our permanent line. And again, you can see they're not the right way around. Just simply pull it up, twist it around, poke it back into the ceiling. And now we have all of our conductors lined up correctly. Next, we're gonna strip the cables, but let's move some of this stuff out of the way just to give ourselves a little bit more of a clear working space. Now, I'm sure you're, you're aware when I've been teaching people, I've been using a knife in order to score around the outside PVC offering mechanical protection and then obviously stripping it back. And in recent videos, I've been using my twin and earth or twin and CPC cable strippers as well. So I'll, I'll do both just to give people a variety of what we can do to strip them with. So if we take our knife, again, look at that. We've got the ability to pull the cable out, which makes it nice. So I'm gonna bring it out. I'm just gonna gently score around with my knife into position. And then I'm gonna snip down the middle of these. And just snip down the center and pull down to that scored area, holding onto my conductors as I go. And just see where we're up to just there. And hopefully this will just break away nice and easily. And that's off. Okay, so we, we've stripped it back and ready to go. And again, let's confirm they're in the right place. So I wanted it so my neutral was gonna be on the side where my neutral block is. If we're using our twin and earth strippers, straightforward. Bring them in as we've seen before. Give them a little pull. Hopefully this comes straight off. And again, just confirm my neutral's in the correct position, which it is there. And then our third one, this is the important one. This is the only one I really need to know what one of the conductors is. And that's the blue one in here. We've not used twin brown. So the blue one will be not a neutral. It will be our switching line conductor. So when we're gonna strip this one back, exactly the same as we've just done. Okay, I need to know what that blue one is. Again, it might just be a case of just putting some more nicks in it. 
So I've got actually, I know what that is. Okay, that is a switching line conductor and not a neutral. Now I could put my brown sleeving on it straight away. So I could drop that on straight away so I know what it is. The only problem is when yours is hanging upside down, obviously there's a tendency for that to fall off. So you'd need to obviously curl it over to stop it falling off. So there's two ways you can do it. To put some extra nicks in it, put your brown sleeving on so you know what it is. And then it's easy. Okay, let's work out what we have got. So we've got our two neutrals. Okay, we've got three CPCs. And we've got our line in, line out, and our line down to our switch. So those three there will go in the center loop terminal. These two here will go in my neutral terminal, my three CPCs in my earthing terminal, and my switching line conductor down here. So it's just a case now of making it neat. Now, a really good uh, idea of a, a good standard of work is when you undo a ceiling rose and pendant, look at the way they've dressed the cables in there. It's like looking inside a consumer unit, you go, that was done, that's pucker. So let's see if we can lay these out as best as we can. I'm gonna get rid of the CPCs first. So if I pull them out of the way, so I can do my CPCs into my earth terminal in here. So we're gonna dress these around. Now I've got uh, two holes to choose from. Again, it's a solid brass block. It doesn't matter where I go. It's just a case of making them look neat. I'm gonna try and put all three of them into one of the holes. We have got some extra cable poking into the ceiling. So it's not the end of the world to leave masses in here. There is some cable in the back of uh, the plasterboard where it goes into the roof. So we're gonna dress these round. So I'm gonna take one round and try and keep it nice and neat. So if we go around like that, for the first time in my videos, you're not gonna see me double over the connections. I am a big fan of doubling over everywhere, but over the years, the holes inside of ceiling rows and pendants have got smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where you can't double them over really realistically and get them in. So pop my green and yellow sleeving on. Probably need to just lose a little bit of that. And I'm gonna dress that one round. I'm gonna try and get all three in the same place. So I'm gonna bring that one round next. So work out our green and yellow length. I said yellow on one of them and everybody commented about that. I apologize, it's green and yellow. Okay, just to clear the, uh, the diction up for everybody. So we're gonna bring that one round. Go with that as a length. And then bring this one round as well. So trying to make them lay nice and neatly against each other as well as we bring those CPCs around. It's important that we have the CPC connections in here even though it's an insulated fit and we know how many times these in houses get changed over for metallic light fittings. And then the CPC will be used to earth the exposed conductive part, which we've talked about a lot. So two of them are okay. I think I'm a bit long on this one. So I'm just gonna bring that back for length and then see if we can dress those in reasonably neatly. Bring my terminal screwdriver. I'm just gonna put them in one of the holes. I could use both, but let's see if we can get all three into one hole. So back off the screw. And it'll be interesting to see if they all go in. Doesn't matter, it's poking through slightly with the copper. Obviously they're the CPCs, they're not a live connection. Important you hold on to them as well, just to make sure you can see them going in. So you can tend to, the sleeving can move and actually you don't put the conductor in until you give them a little tug at the end and find out that actually, You've got a connection missing it's usually after you've done the screw up as well so it goes for the third one we can see all three coming through so they're all three there so just tighten that up those down reasonably tight there we go and then we just uh, confirm a little bit of our dress in there so you can see how i've swung those in in order to make them look reasonably neat our cpcs are connected i could use both um, both terminals i use just one it doesn't matter now what you want to do. Um, we can do the neutrals maybe, so let's move these out of the way. What I like to do is come through the center of the actual ceiling rose base because I like to put my thumb out and just curl them over. So I just give a little bit of a kick, a little bit of a kick curl. So I just put that over my thumb and kick them out and then straighten them out. So they're nice and straight. So we can sort of put them in a neat row. So there we go for that. Then we just got to work out the length. If we come just past here, for our length and now we've got a choice of how to strip them we could come in as we've done many times on the channel we can strip these back using a knife be careful not to press too hard it's only the pvc we want to remove we could use something like this that has a stripping element to it so again if we come into here and let's just make sure i squeeze it up nice and tight i can strip those back maybe a little bit more on that one 
fit it in the right hole. And then we've got those stripped back. And then just go through the process. So we're gonna just dress those round, bringing my terminal screwdriver back off the screw in both cases. Drop my neutrals in and then just tighten those up. It can be a little bit fiddly, especially with holding your arms above your head, but over time you get used to doing that. So once we've got those in, so they're nice and tight. Yep. And then we can see that we're looking to dress those as well. So we're trying to keep them exactly the same length and straight to each other. So that's my two neutrals connected into my block here. Remember the flex will be on the outside. The blue element of the flex will be on the outside for my neutral connection. I've got my lines. Now these are permanent line connections, sometimes called it live, but we know that the neutral and the line conductor are classed as live conductors. So we've got three browns, line in, line out, and line down to the switch, returns as a switching line. So exactly the same process. I'm just gonna bring a little curl up on those over my thumb. And I'm gonna cut them to length. And then I'm gonna strip those back. I could, let's just try and be a bit flash. Let's see if we can do all three of these at once using this bit of kit here. There we go. Stripped all three at the same time. Just gonna trim them back to length. And then we're gonna pop those in as well. So wind off my screws into my loop terminal. Again, this isn't connected to the lamp. We've done wiring diagrams and loads of other videos. We know this is just bringing the line in, out, and down to the switch. Connect those up. It's always difficult to keep yourself out of the way of the camera. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So that's my loop section, my three lines in there. If it was the end point, there'd only be two. And we've talked about that as well on the channel. So I'll just check there in, make sure they don't come out. And then we just lay those down. So we've got that. And then we've got our switching line conductor next. So we know it's not a neutral. Okay, it's got brown sleeving on it. Okay, so that is going to be our switching line conductor. And again, we can just put that into there. Maybe we can use our side cutters for a third way of doing it. Strip it back and pop that one in. Again, it doesn't matter which one of the two you go into, but of course I want to leave the outside ones for my flex. Go into there, make my connection, and then bring my brown sleeve in down so it's close to my terminating point. And then just dress that one back as well. So it's just a case now of laying them neatly in order that we've made those connections. Okay, so we've got two neutrals, our three uh, line connections and our switching line connection. And then if we look at what would happen now, we'd have the flex, blue flex and brown flex, if I bring it around the correct way, that would be for my connections here and here for my actual pendant. So that's it's connected up. Probably would have done these a fraction short. I would have liked them all to have been the same length as those, those neutral ones. So it's whether you go back in and just terminate them slightly differently for lengthwise. But that's my layout. So I've got my switching line conductor, three uh, permanent line or loop uh, connections. That's my line in, line out, and line down to switch. And my two neutrals and my three CPCs connected within our ceiling rows and pendant. Next video. Um, I'll make a few on these. I'll bring another cable in as if we're taking another feed to another room. Uh, we'll bring a three core in as if we're going to an extractor fan and we'll bring a three core in as if we're going to another light that comes on at the same time, things like that. So we'll have a play around with this in future videos. But that's how to connect up a ceiling rose and pendant. Obviously you've got to add the pendant element in when our cables are actually coming down through the ceiling and a few tips that I use. But as always, I hope this video has been some help.